Well, it's nice to be here. Nice to, to talk about my uh, passion. My passion is the battle of the war in the Pacific. So you can start. I'm afraid that's not the first one. Okay, I'll go ahead. Without, um, I developed this passion for the war in the Pacific, not only because I fought there, but also because every year we celebrate Normandy. But you never hear of, you never hear of Tarawa, Tinian, or Peleliu, and Peleliu is where this young man uh, threw his body on a hand grenade in a foxhole to save the lives of three of his comrades. Yeah, the 20 seconds are long, aren't they? <laughs> they weren't like that last night at home. <laughs> this is another picture of myself. I was 18 years old at the time, and I served with this group of gunner's mates on the bell, and this is a bell, picture of the bell, we were called an APA, which is an Amphibious Personnel Attack. attack. Our, our interest was we picked up the troops from the base and with all their equipment and supplies and landed them on the beach to be conquered. During World War II, there were 1,600, okay, uh, <laughs> We are dying at a rate of 555 a day, and our length of time now is about 1,000 days, and all World War II veterans will be gone. This shows that during the war, there were nearly 960, 96 million civilian deaths. What would the world be like today if those people had not died? This is a Japanese empire immediately after Pearl Harbor. They tried to move to the east, but um, we had a fantastic Navy battle at Midway and won, and that stopped them. Um, kill to wounded ratio in Europe, it was one kill for each three wounded. In the Pacific, it was one kill for each two. Now, you know, I don't know why the Japanese were so tough. They were 18 kill by one wounded. One wounded. So you can see in the Pacific, we were five times more likely to be killed, three times more likely to be wounded, and two times more likely to be POWs. In Europe, uh, we had uh, POWs under the Germans and the Italians. The death rate was about 1%. In the Pacific, under the Japanese, the death rate was over 40%. Veterans born on foreign soil. In Europe, we have Normandy with about over 9,000 uh, buried in, at cemetery. In Pacific, we have the Manila Cemetery with over 17,000. At um, Normandy, we have three Medal of Honors at, uh, at um, Manila, we have 23 Medal of Honor winners. There was 464 Medal of Honors awarded during the war. Unfortunately, 266 of them were done posthumously. I have three guys I want to tell you about. Thomas Baker, he was uh, wounded on Saipan, and he uh, did several heroic things, but then at the last minute he said he wanted uh, he got wounded, and a man was trying to get him, a medic was trying to get him back. And Thomas Baker said, I'm done for. Just prop me up against this tree and give me a cigarette and a pistol. They gave him a pistol that had eight bullets, and the rest of the unit retired for the night and to fall back to their lines. When they went ahead the next morning, they found Thomas Baker alive, or not alive, dead, but his 
the cigarette was burned down to the butt, and the pistol was on the ground and empty, and there were eight Japanese soldiers lying in front of him. This is a, a Medal of Honor. He's not a Medal of Honor winner, but he's my hero. And I'll skip on to Desmond Doss. Desmond was a medic in the Army. He, he refused to carry a gun. Any of you that have seen Hacksaw Ridge will know that he uh, did a fantastic thing there. We're standing in front of the rock where he lowered 75 people to safety. This is in the center, upper center, you see the beach as we looked at it in December of this year. This is how we got to the beach on the left, and this is what we saw when we got to the beach in 1944. The local tribe on Saipan is a group called Chamorros, and they found out that I was on the D-Day invasion of both Saipan and Tinian, so they awarded me this medal. And they held a ceremony and uh, just was just fantastic. It, they, uh, every place we went and met with them, they were giving me hugs and kisses and handshakes. I told him I was coming back again next year. <laughs> this is Guam. Um, a lot of tunnels that the Japanese use on Guam and some of the big guns that they fought off are invasion forces. And then on the lower left is Okinawa, which is where my duty in that battle was laying smoke screens to hide our ships from the kamikaze planes. At the right was uh, the, where they loaded the A-bomb for Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, I'm, I'm not giving up on my passion. My passion is continuing. I've had my family, my children, and friends and cohorts who I work with say, why didn't you tell us you were in four battles in the Pacific. Well, it never occurred to me that I needed to talk about it, but now I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it for the rest of my life, and I'm going to promote all those guys who fought in the Pacific.